Thank you very much. Um, Big Pacific greetings again. Welcome to those that are joining us live on Facebook. Thank you for joining this Pacific Blue Line webinar series, connecting our ocean of struggles and remembering why we sweat and cry salt water. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, gives me pleasure to introduce the moderator for this webinar, uh, Jackie Loetta Mua, who joins us all the way from Papua New Guinea. Good morning through one talk. Again, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'll hand it over to Jackie. Yo orana, hello olgeta, nisa bulvinaka, namaste, kem ni maori. Acknowledging all the languages and dialects of our forebearers and mine. O te fata lo fatu ili pa ia malima malu ili nei au fia malo soi fua langi mama. It is Samoan Language Week. As I speak hope into the airways for our country women and to our panelists gathered by Joey Tao and his networks of young Salwarans to talk story to Talanoa about our Moana. Te moana nui a hiva. Te moana nui a kiwa. A wasa wasa. And a fenua. A vanua. Our mama ground. Inspired by mama, Dr. Teresia Tewa, who still reminds us to reimagine our ocean as an oceanic continent an ocean continent that is the source of our poetry, our life force, our mana and modi. She reminds us of the privilege to call this ocean our home. A privilege because our ancestors voyaged bravely and intelligently into the known. It is our home because our ancestors paid scrupulous attention to our environment, paid it respect, knowing that our lives depend on it. But we have not been the only ones to imagine this oceanic continent. Empires saw this great ocean and turned it into their own political images their conquests and theaters of war. From east to west today, we are calling the empire out. Blow the whistle on the whistler. Let's end this game, a game still being played because the money is too good. A game that has seen injury after injury, but have we not learned? Are we not listening? If this were a game of rugby, I'm sure there would be so much more interest. But this isn't a game. This is real life. Our lives and the lives of our mokopuna, our pikininis are at stake. And even now, along the Wau Bulolo corridor here in the Morobe province where I reside, there are women and children involved in what's called artisanal mining with mercury that poisons everything it touches. Wafi Golpu joint ventures are on the precipice of their explorations here. And they say they will dump mine tailings into the Huon Gulf. It appears our food bank is not as important as their financial institutions that operate from clouds high above us. Mercury and associated minerals turn turquoise blue. It is the same color as our ocean. And when the sun rises, my fear is we may not know the difference. Today, we start in the east 
where the sun rises, where the sun of Oceania has been fighting long and hard for te ao maohi. Oscar Manutahi Temaru, former president of the French occupied Polynesia. <laughs> right. <laughs> founder of pro-independence anti-nuclear political party, Tavini Huira Atira Note Ao Maohi, arrested and jailed for your protests against France and his service for the people of Maoha Nui. Oscar, you continued to be an active voice and supporter of the nuclear free and independent Pacific Iorana Papa. Welcome. Iorana, Iorana. I, hand, I hand it over to you, sir. Okay, thank you. It's uh, my great pleasure to uh, uh, to be part of this uh, discussion, and uh, some are very familiar faces uh, like Nick, hi Nick, and the other young people from the Pacific. It's very uh, uh, helpful to see uh, the young people to uh, stand up and uh, speak up uh, about our different countries. Because as she said, uh, our Moana Nui Ahiva is our home and it's our uh, ocean. It's the, uh, uh, the, 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 the mother of, uh, of our ancestors for years. Our ocean has supplied all sort of uh, uh, either food or uh, medicine or navigation throughout different islands and uh, there are a lot to, to learn from this uh, ocean. And, but unfortunately, as you, 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 you know, our country is occupied by the French and which means uh, uh, this country is a kind of uh, occupied country not only by France but by Europe because we have the uh, European passport. So uh, I would like to tell you how, how much we invite you. you. You are free, uh, you got your independence, you, your ancestors have been fighting for that but uh, we are still like uh, New Caledonia under the uh, colonial rule of France. And uh, I would like to uh, invite you this coming July, the 17th, we are organizing a huge demonstration in our country and uh, we will invite uh, a representative from um, the whole world to be part of that uh, demonstration. Because uh, we love our country, we love our ocean and uh, that's, the, the only, uh, should say, uh, treasure to, uh, we had to uh, pr protect it for the young, for the future generation. It is our duty. And uh, thank you, thank you so much for uh, having uh, the pleasure to share this, uh, this uh, uh, conference with uh, all of you. Yorana. Yorana Papatemaru, thank you so much. I would like to invite one of our young uh, poets, uh, Crystal, um, to um, uh, Crystal Selwood Jufa to, um, to perhaps respond by way of uh, of, of poetry. Um, she's also a cadet journalist in Samoa currently. Um, Crystal. Tanafalaba. Furia Kari. Now Zavo Abundre Crystal Furi. Before I share my first epistle, I'd like to acknowledge this space. 
and the matures that have gone before us to set out our mat. I'm honored to share this mat with Oscar Tamaru, a Pacific great, and continue to learn from the legacy of our dear Teresia Tiwa. Also acknowledging my elders in Samoa, up in the beginning, Pardon? Please, please continue. There's a little bit of feedback, but we're all right. Keep going. All right. Uh, Papua New Guinea and the Pacific. Connecting our struggles of my Sousa Tionella in Bougainville. Victor at the forefront. Pardon? Tianella in Bougainville. Victor at the forefront. Rockliffe and my fellow young Sawarans, let us be challenged and let us celebrate our struggles. Now I shall read my poem. Tato or Tanata Falawi Levasa. My dearest children, hear my plea. As days have flown into the orifices of the now, you have forgotten to honor me as your mother. Must a crippled greed hunt your limbless feet, my children? Apparel so dawning, you see not of my pain. Weep, my tireless weep. The years have come to haunt the beauty that I once was, and as I fight to stay afloating, my organs fail me still. Must you be so silent now? Be not still, my children. You have a voice to share. I gave you wings and a mouth, the teeth of a sharp cry, a heart of stone and a mind of gold. Forget me not, my dear children. Your mother fights a tiresome war to thrive a tailless spine of unwanted poison. Beware, my children, this cancer I fight, and I fight for you. Though if you must know this cancer grows, I cannot bear to fight alone. I write to plead with you, my children, cry for me. I'm slipping away. Strong I am not, but forgotten and neglected I feel. Summers that glazed my gleaming face and rains that gave me youth are now painful to touch. Weep, my tireless weep. Though the shores are now sour and my lips of salt, forgive me, I still fight for you. But a time has now come where you must fight for me too, like the waves that count the tides and to the mountains who wait the sun's touch. This kinship of mother and child and children to grandchildren, grandchildren to the ground, I ask you to spare me the poison I still bear scars of. Thrifting, sifting, and unchanging winds that once strengthened me are weighing heavy on these shoulders I carry. Voyages once brought fruit, my children, yet so sweet, so benevolent, the fruit has been poisoned. I call of caution, my children. I plead to live. Must they sail to open my slowly shut wounds and retouch my broken scars, my bones so frail, my time stolen, hear my plea. Now that I write without a voice to a croaking hand, it, you hear me now, I have my hopes written in the grains of sand. You have forgotten who I am and therefore forgotten who you are. Have you ceased to watch the tree bend a narrow bend? My estuaries, a treasure you have gone blind. Fear not of what must happen, but will we'll come. I write that you raise your voices. Stand beside your brethren and fight this fight. I call for I see not. I cry that one day it could be the way it should be. Weep, my tireless weep. Reconciled with the forest beneath your feet, a day where you and I become one again. I once told you, my dearest children, that I'd protect you still. But the time has stripped my bearing arms, my children, I bear to stand not. Might I take the time to remind you the beauty you once knew is losing its ties. And for you, my children, a thought, a cry, a hope, 
can only keep me alive. I've stretched a bed of deep comfort for you across a million stars under a thousand skies. So abandon me not, for I am you. And for you to lose me would be to lose you. Sending my love, your mother, Megalan. Thank you for the time. Thank you, Baptitele Lava Crystal. That was wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for that letter from our mother. Um, I'm going to um, introduce now uh, Honorable Theolina Rokamat Bob, um, a girl who grew up in the shadows of the Panguna mine and the Civil War in Bougainville. Theonila is the second woman parliamentarian to win an open seat in autonomous region of Bougainville and serves as a cabinet minister. She continues to fight for the rights of her people and has led a lawsuit against the mining giant, Rio Tinto. Good day, Honorable Theolina. Is uh, Theolino our uh, Susa here with us this uh, this afternoon? Oh, hello. Hey, welcome. Good day, good day. Good day to all of you. And I am so excited to be part of the panel this morning in commemorating both uh, UNDK for Ocean Science and Sustainable Development and the World Oceans Day. So thank you very much. We are looking forward to your sharing a little about Bougainville. Uh, talk story to us, Susa. Yes, um, well, as um, many of us in the Pacific may be aware of it, Bougainville has its own, own fight within the Melanesian Melanesian region and as a Pacific Highland, we have a very long history of, of political, social, economic abuse that, are, that happen in the best interest of corporations that continue to affect the little people and all of us as, as in the region and as a Melanesian family. Well, and the different experiences that we have with our land and air people went through in Bougainville has actually divided us because of the love of one thing, which is money. So deep within us, money. you know, that the people of Bougainville would want to see freedom, freedom from all the different injustices that we experience for political reasons, social and economic, and most of all, to the, for the love of other people's profit, especially in the interest of the corporations. So, like I would say, if you are like here yeah, in the Pacific region, if you are a person who is rich in, in resources, you simply become a target to the nations or the corporations who use multi million dollar packages to impose control over you. And that's the story of Bougainville. It's very much a practical story, which I would love to share with all the young people in the Pacific, my fellow panelists, viewers, and all the young activists who are standing up to defend what is rightfully ours. Given the story, I'd, I'd like to pay my tribute as well to our former president, 
Oscar Temaru, Teresa Teva, sorry, excuse me if I don't pronounce your names right, but your story, your work has reminded us young people in the Pacific and has inspired us to reimagine and embrace what we were blessed with. So in the experience of Bougainville, being that I come as a person from a matrilineal society, I define land and ocean as just us, like we are the land, we are the ocean. And if I am the land and I am the ocean, then why do I say what I say? And why do I believe that land is me, ocean is me? It is because my whole being is developed from the food that I take from the land. The water I drink runs on the land. The food that I source comes from my ocean. The air that I breathe is produced by the trees that grow on the land. Land and ocean are an inseparable part of you and me as Pacific Islanders. Ignoring the significance of guarding your land and your ocean is like peeling off your own flesh and remaining as a skeleton which symbolizes nothing but poverty. And in Bougainville, that is the story. And in Bougainville, specifically from where I come from, that is the struggle, that is the reality people continue to live in. Bougainville's experience in the last 17 to 30 years with the coming of development under the guise, I mean, coming of mining under the guise of development has actually dug away the land and destroyed the rivers and left me and my people on nothing but the rocks. Viewers, organizers of this important event and interest youths standing up against the injustices to what that's happening to our ocean and our land. The aftermath of destruction is nothing but pure poverty of the mind, heart, and soul. And more, more so, it is the poverty for the unborn generation. And that is something where no one will put a better explanation to, even in the event that Pacific does not rise up against the pressure that is coming from the outside. Given all this judgment, as a child growing up in, in this kind of destruction, I decided to stand up and advocate for justice and advocate against any forms of mining. As a young person, I compare my life, compared my life with other young Bougainvilleans Papua New Guineans, and I've seen that if it was not for the best, if it was not for the interest of the corporations, I would be enjoying life just like everyone else. I would have healthy harvest. I would have fresh rivers to swim and refresh myself. I would be walking in God's created forest. My people would not be crowding the health centers or the services because they will be breathing fresh air. This is not the case for my people, simply because of the economic invasion, which benefited the corporations and their shareholders. And those of us at the receiving end have become no one, not nobody, but victims. And we will be victims for the generations to come. The mess was created. The mess was left behind and my people and I continue to live with the destruction, which is now a health crisis. It's now a human rights issue and it's happening before the highs of the companies, the highs of the government. So what can I do? The best thing that I can do for my people, those that have gone ahead fighting for justice, those that are living now, and most importantly, the unborn generation, is for me to continue to raise my voice to demand justice and that that justice has to prevail. So young Melanesians, young Pacific Islanders, if land and ocean is part of you and part of me, if land and ocean has been feeding you and bathing you, 
your life as an islander depends on the might and productivity of your land and your ocean. Responsibility now lies on you, whether to break that intact relationship, your ancestors, your four parents, your mothers and fathers, and now you are enjoying. And if you, and are you willing to stand up against those that walk into your shores, your highland, to profit themselves and they use money to do nothing but divide you and divide and detach you from your connectivity and your relationship with your land and your ocean. This is the question that I will leave with all the young, young and uprising guardians of our ocean and our land. The pressure is now coming into Pacific because there is hunger on, in the corporate world. Young Pacific Islanders, as a young politician, a young mother, and a an young advocate for justice, I would not want to see another Bougainville in the Pacific where thousands and thousands, in the case of Bougainville, 25,000 lives were laid fighting for justice. And I would not want to see that happening in another parts of the Pacific, where the people will be divided by huge sums of money that will be used by corporations to divide you against each other so that when you fight, they profit. In Bougainville, I continue to stand as a lone voice demanding justice on behalf of my thousand people who are living with the aftermath of what it was tempted as development. There are thousands of people who are hungry as I, I am speaking. Though there are thousands of them who are permanently thirsty, who are mentally confined because they have been detached from their mother, the land. While I continue to join you in your fight, to protect your ocean, to be the better guardian. I also call on all the young people in the Pacific, in the Melanesian region, to join me and to stand in solidarity with my call for justice for Rio Tinto to come and address its legacy issues on Bougainville so that they can once and for all be a solution set forward so that the unborn generation can someone be born into, a, in, into an environment that can be felt secured. And that is not the case as I speak. Viewers, organizers, my fellow panelists, ladies and gentlemen, let's protect our land, our rivers, our forests, and our ocean because they're inseparable parts of you and I. Powerful. Thank you so much, Theonila. Uh, thank you. Thank you, True. Thank you for your voice, for being an activist, advocating for our ocean and land, and for the challenge you have set before the young people to stand up. Thank you, True. I would like to. Um, uh, I, th I think uh, Victor Pickering is in Panama. Uh, he uh, is not able, the connection is not so good that side of the world, but um, he is with us. Um, an environmental activist currently on board the Greenpeace Rainbow Warrior, the third one. Um, he has been witnessing deep sea mining explorations in the Pacific and is calling for a ban to protect our oceans. Victor is unable to join the session, um, but he does send his solidarity, his greetings, and he's available on chat as well if you need him. Uh, but Joey will be playing for us a two minute video that uh, he would like to share with us all this afternoon. Thank you, Joey.
Hi, all. Sorry, did was there no sound in that one? Apologies, some technical issues. Aroha mai. Um, uh, but we'd like to turn it back to our poet, Crystal Jufa, to, um, to respond. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. My second poem is called Changing Winds of Summer Green. And the tides came crashing thunders of polymer greed. Mr. Corporate Man saw a stream of income as he pounded his bare chests. He stood of our stance, pointing to the horizons beyond the tomorrow of the indefinite coming. He yelled to the skies. He yelled to the skies, must it rain? Rain in abundance of wealth to breathe in a new finger heart. They washed near the shore later of frail future. What shall our children grasp, if not a future of teething ignorance? He grew twice the size of the global fleet, a dead silence grew in the hearts of many. Silenced by his temporary gleam and attracted to a tomorrow that would be bare, crippling voices that lived unborn, he cradled a hope in digging deep. He begged the earth, to give him more as he grew tiresome of what he already had. Hunger grew in him like a virus that disabled his humanity. We must, we should, we could, became we can. Eventually, leaving the earth a naked skeleton of what once was a paradise, now a graveyard of hope. Baptized. Uh, if it's ideally lava crystal, awesome. Yeah. Um, we would we are going to replay the video after we've um, we've heard from our last um, panelist, uh, Rock Live, um, uh, Poloso from Choisel in the Solomon Islands. Rock Live leads a movement of young people against extractives such as mining in his province. He is also part of the Young Salwara Pacific Movement based in Honiara. Hello, Olgeta. Hello, my friend. Hello, Rock Live. Welcome, welcome. Hi, hello. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, and who's your friend next to you? Uh, I'm, I'm a call, so that's my son, actually. Very interested to, to, to be around, so don't mind. Fantastic, new generators. Yeah, it, it, it's a concept of the future, it's all we've been talking about, so I'm happy to, to be here presenting. And and I think thank you thank you to everyone the panelists and and yeah uh, Bang and the team for inviting me to see us today. As as an introductory, um, um actually my name is Rocky Poloso. I'm from from Solomon Islands and it's my province is Soizo. So uh, I've been to to the network uh, being for my uh, involvement in. In, in mining related issues. So what, what I did is here, yeah, that's four or five years back, we, we, we did a campaign on, on the extractive industry against a company who, who does seven years of prospecting in, in the Solomon, in, in, my, in my land where I came from as well. So we, we did a good fight. We did media campaigns, we did petitions to the government and, and, we, we, and we ended up with a good conclusion whereby the company actually give up and, and leave, leave our land and left. So it, it, it's a cool story whereby people might say, oh, you say some development, but our concept is basically about our land is actually our mother. So when, when you kill our land, 
with the small islands, it's like you're killing your mother. So that's the concept we went through. And I think I've, I've been I've been there with with the whole history of uh, networking with Bang. I, I come into in touch with Bang, Zoe. I think that's one of the years back in 2014, 2015. I got inter interviewed with Radio New Zealand, but uh, Zoe from Bang also met me here in Honiara specifically for that campaign time. So I've been part of the Young Solvara and I share the same concern story. So I've heard about the awesome day today and it's, it's been awesome to be part of this, of this, this story. So uh, my purpose mainly not to talk more on whatever, but I'm going to read the awesome statement for, for, for Young Solvara. So I think let me start. So awesome. Thank you guys. So let's start. So as I reflect and share the call of Young Solvara, Pacific and the Collective during the United Nations Austin Conference in 2017, it calls for a recognition of the Pacific story history as stewardship of the world's largest ocean. As we soak up the sharings from the seasons of connecting and reconnecting our oceans of struggle, we acknowledge the, the test of time that our region has withstood and commemorate those who are endured and withstood nuclear testing, a hero in history with ramifications that are still felt by our oceans, lands, and people. We remember this period as being a time when our oceans and our people were utilized as guinea pigs by foreign powers. We acknowledge the issues posed by both and present the Pacific faces. And we firmly refute the narrative that uh, we, we are actually victim, we are victim. We stand tall as the next generation of Pacific Islanders who shall also thrive on sea of our islands. We stand on the shoulders of the giants who went before us to make a stand. The challenge for us as Pacific leaders and actors is to play a stand against genocide. We, the Pacific, must allow a reputation of colonial, must not allow a reputation of colonialism. Our peoples have suffered greatly from the destructive programs of materialized colonial powers during the 20th century and continue into the 21st. The legacy of nuclear testing to Oceania, in particular the Marshall Islands, French Polynesia, and elsewhere, has never been effectively remedied or addressed. So, the consequences of detonating hundreds of nuclear bombs of a much greater destructive power than Hiroshima or Nagasaki atomic bombs are still felt greatly today by our people, manifesting in among other impacts, rehabilitating health and intergenerational maladies. This legacy continues to threaten not just people and our ocean, but the health and well being of the earth, the planets, oceans, and the people who depend upon them. Henry Kissinger, in response to nuclear testing in Marshall Islands, is quoted as stating, there are only 90,000 people out there. Who gives, who gives a damn? In response, we say, we are still here. We are not going anywhere. Cut to storm on Ronit Island is, is a statement to a history of experimental and the violation of our people's fundamental human rights. Our oceans have still not recovered from the destructive acts of world wars, nuclear testing, and continued military maneuvers. Intensified efforts must be made to demilitarize the oceans and to clean up the existing mess. As we Pacific clamor for international action to hold carbon emissions and desist from environmentally degrading activity, let us therefore be the the change that we wish to see in the world. Today, they are 
there are parallels, parallels to be seen in the unrest of extractivity as you said, this deep sea mining. It's an issue that the Pacific government are still toying with. The discussion on seabed mining has proceeded narrowly for the past 30 years. They are not been in inclusion of our people's voices or much thought as to the inordinate risk in operating an unrest extractive industry in a fragile and almost completely unknown deep sea mining environment. We are once again faced with the same situation here, foreign influence seeking to utilize the Pacific for their own means. Our ocean cannot yet again be used as an experimental test based for an activity whose full environmental ramifications are still not fully known. We cannot allow such a reputation of experimental that will again affect our, our oceans and our people. The Pacific has withered the test of time. Over that millennia, our people have not simply survived, but tried to do the bounty of, ocean, of, of our ocean. With the, with the advent of women induced climate change, the ocean that has nurtured us for millennia has now become a threat to the existing of our islands. Our land, ocean, and people have historically been used as the guinea pigs to kill the grid defense needs and convenience of foreign entities. The advent of deep sea mining is simply another evolution in the history of greed, skilled economic exploitation, and a callous disregard for the environment and in human life. We, the people of Wansawara, stand firmly opposed to militarism, environmental degradations, and the violation of our human rights. We are all senior, give me one Sovara. We are the sea of the islands. We must not allow this history to repeat itself. Thank you. Thank you, True Rock Live. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I thought uh, before we played the video, I was going to open it up to uh, Papa Temaru. Please, um, um, we've got a question, um, if you could respond to how would you, what is your key advice, sir, to young emerging leaders who are taking on the struggle? Papa Temaru, what is your key advice to these young emerging leaders who are taking on the struggle today? We would love to learn from you. And perhaps if not immediate, maybe Joey, we can play the video and then give us all, give um, Papa Temaru some time to respond. And then we will open up the floor for questions and comments. My name is Victor Pickering. I'm an environmental activist from the Fiji Islands, and I'm here on board the Red Bowar Red Tree, bearing witness against the devastating impacts that deep sea mining will have on our Pacific Island countries. So the ocean for me is everything. It's the source of food. Uh, it, uh, it's a mode of transportation. It takes us around the islands, visiting families. For us, the ocean is one.
I feel that uh, Pacific Island people deserves to be heard. That we should not support deep sea mining. We need the ocean for our food, for our climate, for our marine biodiversity. We want governments to come into an agreement and make the Global Oceans Treaty to protect the oceans by 30% by the year 2030. If the ocean is the blue heart of our planet, we and the sea are its life beats, and we cannot let deep sea mining destroy our symphony. Please sign the petition. That was awesome. Second time round. Thank you so much. And uh, we're opening up the uh, portal now for questions, or comments. Please raise hand and uh, and uh, let's let's get talking. Let's start the Stalanoa. I know we have some um, representatives from Rambi, Ivanova, uh, Dr. Kati, if she's still here, Tewa, um, we would love to hear from you. Um, Maori, Jackie, and come to Maori, everyone. Um, this was wonderful. It was really amazing to hear from all the speakers and Thank you so much to all of you, the organizers, for honoring um, my, uh, my late elder sister, Teresia Tewa. Um, it's really wonderful to um, see her words, her ideas, and her legacy continue to influence and impact um, the work that you're all doing and uh, activism in the Pacific and um, underscoring those connections that we have to the land and to the sea. Um, when I was listening to everyone, probably the most profound thing for me was how the work that the speakers are involved in um, and the, um, the protest action and the concerns are all related to mining different forms of mining and the impacts of mining. Um, as some of you know, Banaba was mined from 1900 to 1980 by Australia and New Zealand and the United Kingdom. And so one of the um, arguments that I've constantly been making in my work is that the past matters, that history matters, that what has happened before shapes what is happening today. And mining has one of those long, enduring, profoundly negative impacts on our land and sea. And often some of our leaders, some of our communities see mining as some pathway to economic development, I think is one of the other speakers mentioned, but it really isn't. And so we really need to think, rethink the kinds of paradigms that we're living in today and learn from the past experiences of those who've been impacted by things like mining and other forms of extraction, nuclear testing, um, so many things that have happened already in the Pacific. And the other thing I try to remind people about is that climate change and the kinds of actions that we are now um, involved in over climate change and the critiques that we're leveling at climate change are not disconnected from things like mining. They're all part and parcel of the same kind of extractive industrial impact on our region. And all of those things are connected to neoliberal economics and to just the kinds of things we've accepted um, economically, socially, politically, along with modernity. Um, so it was really, really amazing to hear people talking about belonging to the ocean, belonging to the land. Sometimes when we talk about these things in academic contexts, 
people think we're trying to be romantic about our environments, about our Oceania, and that is not the case. We feel these things deeply. Um, and my sister's words and her work are all about feeling those connections deeply. They're not theoretical. They're deep and they're also practical and pragmatic, I think, as our colleagues um, from Solomon Islands and Bougainville mentioned. So these values and these ways of being and knowing and doing um, are wonderful. And I really appreciate how much all of you shared about it. So Kambasin Rapa Binakavaka Lebusara, it was a privilege to, to hear everyone speak. Napalevu, that was wonderful. And um, just in terms of practice and the practical issues, we have an anonymous attendee asking about, um, from our panelists about safety and what risks are there um, exist out there there and how can we better support your safety in that space that can respond from the panel please Vanessa, please join us. Sorry, hi. Just to put to the question, it's a question regarding risk and safety of concerns about the environment in the future, or it's something to do with in relation to work and perspective. If the question can be rephrased or how do we how do we look at it to respond? I think it's about keeping safe. It, it's um it's come from Tina Ngata and uh, she's asking how do we keep you safe in the work that you do out there? Um practically on the ground, what do you need from us? What would you like to see from us? How can we assist? Yeah, I, I think from, from, my, from my own perspective, that's my view, I, I would see that in the world today, it's been getting tougher, harder to, to continue on, on, on being, being trying to be concerned about the environment and people. And, and we understood that it's, it's feeling less and less of people who have to be in front and, and speak out or we shall blow up. But I think we all rely on blessings and, and a very paramount concept that we speak for the truth and naturally some, somehow protected. But I think it's safe to say that we, we always, we always, talk on issues that that is a concept for most leaders to be trying to do policies, regulations, whatever, but I think for us it's it's it's, it's good to to keep keep positive and encourage the young people to keep speaking out. But I think naturally what we speak for is it's silently in the hearts of the many, many, many indigenous landowners and the people who can't speak out. So I think that, that's my take on safety and risk. We take the bigger risk in saying that we talk about the big money firms, we talk about the big investment, telling them that, sorry, we don't need you, but they need the big, big bags and the big profits and big money. But in, in terms of safety and, and, and way forward, I, I would agree that we, we, are, we are so safe that we fight for our own people with without any KPI, without any money related compensation stuff, but I think that's that's also and we should be proud of where we are. So I would encourage everyone to keep keep the vibe and we, we acknowledge all our growing 
people to understand soul and talk and we now we do today and we encourage again the future to continue. I think that's my take on the question. Hopefully I'm I'm answering you some part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we have one other question. How do we work with our governments to fight against the destruction of Pacific environment? Panelists? Yeah, do you have a rule? <laughs> The top part of the mail, add a top slot machine. Hey, I don't move out for you to slot only. How you like? Thank you, Papa Temadu. We would love to hear from you, please. Please. Yes, to, to, to be very um, uh, brief, uh, just to remind our Pacific Ocean has been used by uh, those different countries for nuclear testing either in the atmosphere or underground in the sea and that uh, uh, radioactive fallouts are still there and uh, we the people who lives in the Marshall Islands or here in uh, Maohinui uh, we are we support the consequences from those uh, uh, nuclear testing and we've been uh, telling to the world the truth of uh, all those years of nuclear testing and lately let's say a couple months ago uh, a book uh, uh, which is uh, the, the, the toxic was published and uh, it has uh, done a huge, big noise in our country. Yes. So that's why today, while we are talking, there's a round table in Paris because the French government has invited all of us to go to France and uh, to know the truth. And we refuse to make that trip to Paris. We said, no, you know, while they were preparing the uh, COP21, maybe that was the year 2010. Uh, you read the report, there's nothing about Moruro and Fangataufa. It was organized by the French government. So uh, the French government keep lying, lying all the time from all those years. So uh, I'm talking about the French government and the other government, uh, Sugar Power, did the same, we know. So uh, we, the Pacific Ocean people, we have to be very careful. And it's a great pleasure to see you, the young generation, to stand up and uh, keep, keep uh, telling to the world that how we cherish our Pacific Ocean, our home, our mother, our paradise. So that's my uh, message. And to remind you this coming, uh, July the 17th, we are organizing uh, a big demonstration in our country. And we have invited leaders from uh, all over the world. And we also invite you to join us uh, July the 17th, demonstration against the colonial power of France and the system colonization of our country still there. And in New Caledonia, it's the same. That's my uh, message. And uh, I cheers uh, all of you. Thank you, Papa Oscar. Um, we have um, Michael Henao. Are you there? Michael, would you like to um, present your question to the forum, please? Thank you very much and uh, dinner to Bunawana to all of you. Uh, Michael Hennell here from Port Moresby in Papua New Guinea. I uh, just had a question for the panelists. Uh, our former Secretary General for the Pacific Island Forum, Dame Meg Taylor, warned against further division amongst our island leaders and the dangers that that could bring if they do not stand together and work together against non-Pacific influence. Uh, as we know, at the moment, there's a, a geopolitical 
um, challenge going on between two of the world's major superpowers. And I think Dame Meg's message to all of us was warning against further division in our forum um, and on our mat, if you like, uh, from of course maybe brought about by these uh, by these bigger powers than us. So my question to the panelists is: Are you concerned about the impact of the divisions in the PIF on the work that you do to protect our region and its resources? Thank you, Michael. Just waiting for any panelists want to respond to the work of the Pacific Islands Forum. And the divisions that have existed. I think, Jackie, if I may, um, sorry to just uh, jumping, but to respond to Michael's uh, question around the current divisions um, and the outgoing SG's concerns about a divided region or the external influences, I think we could draw back on uh, past experiences where the Pacific has come together um, despite our diplomatic relations, either be it with China or with our traditional um, partners, Australia and New Zealand. Um, but the past has, has showed us a great example of regionalism uh, that the Pacific had led. Um, the Rarotonga Treaty is one, uh, and we can draw back from those experiences. And I think just connecting to what Carter had talked about, um, on some of the works that have been done in the past or experiences in the region that we could really learn from. Um, Tianella sharing around Bougainville um, and countries who are now pursuing um, deep sea mining exploration. We could look back on some of these experiences in Papua New Guinea around mining in Octedi and maybe it could inform, inform our way forward. Um, with regards to regionalism, I understand the Northern Pacific has <clears throat> made their stance very clearly, but I think there are opportunities, uh, be it sub-regionally, uh, be it or at the global level that the Pacific um, can come together and um, be united. One of, one of the very great examples is the cu current climate uh, battles that our Pacific leaders are united and are fighting for. So there are past experiences that we could learn from um, and there is hope for a united uh, Pacific Forum. Thank you, Joey. I just note that Enna Manu Ireva, do you got your hand up? Would you like to, uh, please, the forum is yours. Is that Enna? Enna? Oh, yes, it's Enna. Yorana uh, Tatuva, Bulo Manaka. Uh, my name is Anna Manuidova, and I just wanted to tag along with mm -hmm. what Oscar was saying earlier. Mm -hmm. I come from a small island called Mongareba, which is roughly 400 oh, kilometers away from Mororoa and uh, Fangatelfa. So we have, you know, we're talking about uh, how, why do we sweat and why do we cry salty? Uh, tears is exactly because those tests has been imposed upon us the nuclear test i'm talking about for 30 years and when our dear the mature oscar was talking about those tests we were the first people among the device to have been uh, contaminated in um, 1966 second of july and this is a kind of uh, testimony that uh, I wanted to give to all of us in the Pacific. For me, uh, the way to make sure that the government listens to us is for us to go out there in the street and protest and march and manifest our discontent for acts that have been 
uh, perpetrated in the Pacific. It doesn't matter, you know, whether it's in French Polynesia, in Australia, in the Marshall Islands, in Bikini, those acts have been perpetrated by a colonial power. And this is what we need to do. We need to go out there on the street, as Oscar was saying, on the 17th of July, they'll be doing their protest, the Pacific, as a pacifist, you know, protest outside to tell those colonial power, in this case, France, to come and clean, clean the places that they have polluted, because this ocean of ours will be polluted. In some years, we noticed that Moruro might just collapse and underneath you got plutonium in Moruro. Plutonium will seep out and then the coral reef and then go into, into the sea. So that is what we need to do. We need to go out there. I will be out there from here, from New Zealand. I will carry my banner. I will show myself there and tell the government to, to make a stamp whether it's in New Zealand, in Australia, in Paris, if we get all together, all our fourth force, our strength together, we can make a change. And that's how we can uh, make the government uh, notice us and do something. If we stay where as we are in our, on a Zoom, that's good. That's a good uh, platform to prepare and start a movement. But what's happening is it has to happen outside on the street. So that's only what I can say in order to make the government, if you want, especially the French government, the English American government, accountable for the act that they have done in the past. We need to go out there. So I hope that uh, some people will be joining us on the 17th of July. Uh, in Tahiti, but we in New Zealand will be doing it on the 18th of, of July to synchronize uh, our movement, which is roughly to remind people that's the biggest uh, nuclear test, the biggest blast was called Centaurus, and it contaminated over 110,000 people in Maohenui, French Polynesia. So that, that's my call to uh, all of us who are present here. And I have to thank the organizers for this Zoom, but hopefully the government, all those governments will notice what we are doing. So thank you very much for listening to me and I hope we can carry on this discussion. Thank you, Maruru, Bulavanaka, Tenakoto. You heard it guys, 17th of July or the 18th if you're in the other side of the timeline. Um, Joey, how are we doing for time? Uh, Tiolina, uh, Tionila has uh, had to send in her apologies and she um, has to, has had, she's got another meeting and she has uh, departed. Um, I think it might be time to fare, farewell us all. I think we can leave it open for a few more questions, reflections, more maybe questions. some reflections. I I understand Tamani has something to share. Tamani, uh, like Tamani, please share with us. I guess Tamani is finding it hard to connect. Um, maybe we can move on, Jackie. Um, those who are participating, or oh, we also have Josiah who's just raised his hand. Josiah, would you like to share something? Um, thank you, Joey. Uh, thank you, Jackie. And uh, His Excellency, uh, 
uh, President Oscar Temaru, um, and to all the panelists, thank you so much for the sharing this afternoon. Um, I would like to reaffirm uh, um, the message from the, the lady, the young girl from Bougainville, eh? the fact that we are connected to our land and to our Vanua, especially with the Fijian um, culture where you have totems that you have the fish, the various totems that we have that connects us to our Nua. And that's something that we need to take into our account that the deep connections that we have with our Nua, with our Sawasa, with our Moana and our young Sawasa. Thank you so much. Nagvalevu, Josiah, thank you. The peace movement out Aotearoa, um, Papa Temaru is uh, looking for a link that we can share, that can be shared uh, for that protest uh, in Aotearoa on the 18th of July. That would be great if you could forward it to, to us. Um, we'll make the link available. Um, we'll get in touch with Oscar and the young people. Hey, new to share the links and information in lead up to the uh, Pacific demonstration in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Maui Nui. Uh, also noting there's some links, some resource materials that have been shared. Uh, you can find them in the chat box. Um, we will be happy to email to everybody after this webinar. Inaka Joey, I think uh, I'm cooked. Okay, I think that brings us to the end. Jackie, over to you. Would you like to wrap it up for us? Just a big warm thank you for everybody to participate. Arohamai, if there's anything done today, forgive us for any wrong. This is our way, we must apologize. For our lateness, aroha mai, fatmangalo mai. Um, for the words of our young people, sometimes, you know, to our elders, forgive us. Um, but uh, I just want to just give a big, a big thank you, Joey, to you and your young Sawarans for incredible work. We've heard some, some great uh, stories, some um, empowering testimonies. Navalevu, keep up the amazing work, and we'll see everybody on the 18th trying to figure out how to do it in lay.